Okay, so I'm going on a little field trip this morning um, to Fender's Fish Hatchery, which is in Boldick, Ohio. It's about 25, 30 miles from here. I never knew it existed until recently. Uh, I was thinking about building a fish pond. Um, in the area I'm looking at, which is behind where you're looking, but I have an existing old strip mine pond here on the property, and there's never been any fish in it. So I've sort of always assumed you probably couldn't support fish. It's, you know, an old strip mine pond, and not all of them can. They can be pretty acidic. Uh, so I'll let you look back here, sort of behind me, is the pond. And I had, I had pursued tons, I did a lot of research and I, I pursued the uh, Department of Natural Resources, the County Extension Agency, uh, all kinds of government resources thinking surely somebody can test the water for me and see if it's suitable for fish. None of them were any help at all. Some of them I couldn't even get a call back. I left voicemails. I did get a call back from the county extension agency who said, oh, we might have a guy that knows a little something. I'll have him call you. He never called. So I thought, you know, maybe a hatchery, if they want to sell you fish, maybe they'll test the water. <clears throat> so I Googled fish hatcheries to see if there were any close to me. And sure enough, uh, it's in Amish country, not that far from here, and uh, so I'm going to go over there, and well, I called, and I talked to Steve Fender, wonderful guy, very helpful, uh, has his cell phone number right on his website, and I, I told him my situation, told him nobody would help is there anything he would could suggest and he said fix you right up bring me a water sample so I'm gonna get a water sample and I'm gonna go over and uh, take a little field trip and and visit with Steve Fender so uh, I'll let you know how that goes hey, after about 40 miles of dirt road here I am at Fender's fish supply well, we're going to get the water tested for the pond. Okay, so that was really good news. Um, first, let me say, if you are anywhere in Ohio and you have need to stock a farm pond with fish, go to Fenders. I say that, I have nothing to do with them, I'm, I'm getting nothing for this, but I say that because he was the most helpful, wonderful guy I could have ever asked for. Uh, very, very knowledgeable, has written a book called uh, Farm Pond Management, I believe is the title of it. Uh, it sells on his website, it's 20 bucks, and that was the best 20 bucks I ever spent. Um, when I took my water sample in, I had it in a quart canning jar, and I handed it to him and he walked over to the door and looked at it in the light. Uh, it let the sunlight sort of shine through it and he said, before I test it, I can tell you you're okay. Now here's a man just looking at a jar of water that says he knows it's okay. So I said, now how can you tell that just by looking at it? He said, you see that little tiny guy swimming around in there? And I mean, it was 
microscopic. But sure enough, when I looked where he said, I could see it. He said, that's zooplankton. And he said, if this jar of water you handed me would have been crystal clear and nothing in it, I would really question it before I test it. But he said, zooplankton is sort of the next to the bottom of the food chain in a pond. Uh, the fish fry as they hatch in your pond in the future will feed on the zooplankton, um, which the fish fry tiny little guys then give other fish food to eat and on up the food chain. And uh, he used words I never heard of before, but what it did was tell me he really knew his stuff. He knew what he was talking about. So then he did a chemical test on my water and it tested a six, which he said seven, of course, is perfect. Uh, six is very acceptable and he didn't see any problem at all. So, of course, my next question was, well, why aren't there any fish in it? And then he explained to me all about winter freeze. The ice covers the pond, snow covers the ice, sunlight can't get in, plant life dies, no photosynthesis, putting oxygen in the water, decaying vegetation in the water, traps gases under the ice, kills the fish, long story. Bottom line is, he said, if you put aeration in, uh, he's got a, a pump that he sells, uh, he said that'll keep the water open, let sunlight in in the winter, uh, photosynthesis can continue to happen, putting oxygen in the water, plus even if it would freeze over at 10 below zero and the oxygen, the bubbler doesn't keep the water open, it's putting air in the water under the ice, fish can live. There were lots of other biological and chemistry oriented words he used in in there amongst that but that was the bottom line of it so the good news is this pond will support fish uh, so I'm gonna build a dock here on the end of the pond so we can walk out on the dock and fish we can walk out there and feed the fish the grandkids will love feeding the fish uh, Steve suggested he's got a half pond package of bass and bluegill and hybrid bluegill and red, red eared sunfish of some kind and then there's uh, two types of hybrid white carp that help control the plant balance in the pond. Anyway, this whole package is probably going to be perfect for the pond uh, it's like 180 bucks for I think it was 25 bluegill 25 hybrid bluegill 25 of those red eared something or others and uh, I think there were 50 bass like 3 to 4 inch bass and then like 4 pounds of minnows you put in that get them started for food supply. Anyway, about April, we're going to stock fish. And uh, in the meantime, maybe I'll get a dock built if the weather holds and uh, life is good. So, you know, my point of creating this video is to let you know that help's available if you have a pond and you want to get it tested. Uh, if you're not in Ohio, uh, they don't, they, well, they do ship fish. Uh, Fenders does fit, uh, ship fish to all over Ohio. I'm not sure, maybe some of the neighboring states they do. Uh, they can't airship yet. I saw that on their website. But uh, if you're in Ohio, it's worth the drive or they will get them to you. If you're not in Ohio, uh, and, and you can't deal with fenders, um, check with a fish hatchery. They may just be the help you need. 
uh, to get a pond started, to build a bond, a pond. Uh, Steve's book even, even you know, if you're out of Ohio, I'm sure they'll mail order the book. It's worth just getting his book on pond management. There's even a section on there on, in, in, on pond construction. There's, you know, what to do for plant life, what to do for too many plants, not enough plants, more oxygen, uh, pH levels, testing. I, I, they're, it's just uh, a wealth of knowledge. And you may have better luck with your county extension or state natural resources department. I got nowhere. Uh, I got no help at all. But, but again, fenders, they came through for me and really helped me out. So anyway, there you have it. So see you next video. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, I'll be doing more knife making videos, more videos about homesteading. Um, as I build a dock, I'll probably do a video on, you know, show you what I'm doing there. And uh, in the spring, when I stock the fish, I'll definitely be showing that. So anyway, uh, stay warm this winter. Get the firewood stocked in. Oh, that was another thing that made it worth the trip when I went over to Fender's Fish Hatchery. Right down the road from him, or right up the road, up the hill, I passed on my way there was an Amish uh, sawmill and they had firewood out and I got a heaping pickup load of firewood for 25 bucks so I had a good bit of wood already but uh, this gives me just a little bit of insurance firewood for this winter if it gets really bad so anyway so I got some firewood I got a wealth of knowledge from Steve Fender I got Steve Fender's pond management book and uh, Today was a good day. See you next video.